institutions, new regulation projects, and new buildings. So what I'm presenting to you is, in a certain way, what was just before the 1973 oil crisis. By the way, the 19th century, we already in a lot of countries, the um, solar energy use, especially for water heating, um, and also in between the two wars, there were a research on solar heating, for example, both in Europe with Martin Wagner and the United States with the brothers Keck. But let's say starting after World War II, 1949, we have uh, this um, ha solar house in Dover, Massachusetts, by two women, Maria Telkes and Eleanor Raymond. MIT started uh, in 1938 a research on solar houses, and the fourth of these uh, prototype is this one, which was uh, tested in 1958. And, uh, of course, the comment was Tech proves sun can heat a New England house, but the cost of the equipment is uh, necessary, is prohibitive. Uh, George Loff in Colorado, already in the 40s, started uh, experimenting with solar collectors based uh, on air circulation. Henry Matthew went for the option of a solar collector based on water circulation. Felix Tromb in France, an engineer, built already in the same year, 1967, uh, in the, um, two dwellings using a, a new device, a six, six centimet 60 centimeters thick wall um, in uh, concrete, um, set a few centimeters from a glass panel to create an efficient passive solar collector, a system which then became very, very common and was used, for example, from uh, architect Kelbau in Princeton in 1975. Other architects like Reynolds and Steve Baer, they, they uh, produced some of their work before the 1973. The Tumba House using beer cans in place of bricks by, by Reynolds is by 72. And the Steve Baer House in New Mexico in which he stored a heat for uh, solar radiation in water drums were constructed in 1971. Also, underground construction. After the work in the 40s uh, by some pioneer like uh, Swayze, uh, underground buildings were put in place uh, by people like Malcolm Wells and Don Metz, again 1971, 1972. And research in wind energy with the aim of energy self-sufficiency were already in place uh, in the 40s, and the famous group Wind Wars, which was also supported by Buckminster Fuller, was formed in the 1970. And a call a group of architects of, uh, and students connected with McGill University. Uh, they already built a prototype of low-cost dwelling, a call house in 72 with uh, very simple construction technique, uh, solar water heaters, system of recycling and distilling wastewater, wind generator, and so on. New Alchemy Institute, uh, again, was founded in 1969, and the same for Farallones um, Institute. So, what is uh, the point about that? That uh, until 1973, all such researches, projects, and building were dismissively considered uh, products of a kind of subculture, an alternative counterculture. And uh, perhaps they were considered a product of eccentric experimentation of strange people, few engineers, autodidacts, and architects. So it was uh, this uh, 1973 crisis which made uh, in a certain way, solar panels, passive solar energy, windmills, underground buildings, immediately uh, a reality. In uh, October 1973, these projects and buildings suddenly became true and necessary. They became the reference point for a new idea of architecture, 
of the environment, of the energy, and of the city. And also for a series of new buildings and new public policies. Because one effect of this crisis was that it was a kind of wake-up call for public institution and government. And that produced new standards, new regulations, new experiments. For example, there were some uh, funding plan, funding programs in the United States to support the solar energy. Generally, the, this kind of uh, result was uh, a use of solar collector to heat the water of the swimming pool. But uh, in Europe, on the contrary, the, most of the countries, they concentrated, especially in Central Europe, on insulation. Started at that moment uh, the kind of uh, legislation about, uh, which is now normating a lot of uh, building in most of the European countries, about uh, um, uh, insulation of the building which was uh, very productive and which had a lot of effect also on the architectural thinking, especially in Germany and in Switzerland. But uh, there were funding programs for solar housing, competition for solar building in different countries, United States, France, and Germany. And uh, there were funding for research group and institutes. Also, for example, the Underground Space Center at the University of Minnesota in the United States. So, researchers started to examine the impact of the energy crisis on land use and uh, factor as uh, energy conservation, population density, transportation system starting to be taken in account. Uh, correlation between growth, energy, and environment started to be analyzed. So, what, what, was, uh, the, what could we consider the contribution of um, these kind of uh, groups. As I said, the, one of the most important thing was the impact they had sometime for a short period like the United States in a very different way in Europe where this kind of uh, legislation and new regulation they were then put in place till today, they are still improved. It was a very, very important effect. Um, this is uh, the, some of the photos of uh, Jimmy Carter in 1979 presenting the new solar panels on the White House. And I think it's a very symbolic uh, uh, gesture by uh, Jimmy Carter. And it's also very symbolic that a few years later when uh, Ronald Reagan uh, went to the White House, that was the first things that he dismantled. Uh, from the roof of the White House. But uh, so some of these uh, things were put in place and uh, they changed our way to approach problems and thinking of that. But there were also other points that are very, very important. I'd like uh, to remind and to take some of these to your attention. First of all, I'd like to, to remind you that uh, these architects they started to work and experiment in the 70s and the 80s on certain concepts and certain ideas, like the one of appropriate technology, convivial tools, and soft path, starting from the reflection of people like uh, Ivan Illich, Fritz Schumacher, and Emory Lobbins. Second point is that, that uh, it was 